Happy weekend from Fext Your Life. If you've been too busy to keep up on the latest in games we cover, or are looking for a refresher, we've got your back. Let's take a look at the comings and goings across the Fext Your Life wiki network. This past week, publisher Bandai Namco released the limited Dark Souls The Vinyl Trilogy soundtrack, and it is now available for purchase. The complete soundtrack collection features music from Lordran, Dranglink, and Lothric, all packed in a nine vinyl collector's box with the game's cover artwork. It's composed by Motoi Sakuraba and Yuka Kitamura, and has a runtime of over five hours of hauntingly beautiful tunes of death in high fidelity. So far, the Dark Souls The Vinyl Trilogy soundtrack collection is only available for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa regions, and retails for 119 euros. It's important to note that only 2,000 copies have been made, making this a rare collectible item, so get them before they're gone. We have screenshots of this gorgeous collection ready for you on the blog. From Software is added again in the figurine department. This time, you can treat yourself to an adorable figure set of Bloodborne's Hunter and Plain Doll, done in a chibi art style. Announced on the official Bloodborne Twitter account, the vinyl figure set is a collaboration between Sony and Merchandiser ESC Toy Shop, which includes a 4-inch Plain Doll and a 5-inch Hunter. ESC Toy Shop also sells merchandise of other well-known gaming titles, such as Uncharted, Final Fantasy, and The Last of Us. It also sells a Bloodborne pin set, as well as another Bloodborne vinyl figure set that's coming in early 2018. You can check these out on the blog. The closing chapter to William's adventure in Japan's Sengoku Jidai titled Neo Bloodshed's End was finally released this past week. It includes new yokai, new characters such as the famous Toyotomi Hideyoshi, as well as new abyss mode, and much more. The DLC finale marks Team Ninja's end with the action RPG Neo, and to commemorate it, the studio's creative director Tom Lee shared a heartfelt message which you can read in full in the article on the blog. Furthermore, the developer will be releasing Neo Complete Edition this winter in Japan, which includes all previously released content, as well as the recent Bloodshed's End. No word is of yet on a Western release, but an announcement will be likely made soon. The package comes in two SKUs, and you can check out its contents on the blog. Platinum Games' critically acclaimed post-apocalyptic action RPG Nier Automata surpassed 2 million units sold worldwide this past week, and the sales figure released accounts for all physical units shipped, as well as digital purchases made globally. In addition, pre-orders for the vinyl box set of Nier Automata and Nier Gestalt and Replicant original soundtracks have been available since September 25th, exclusively from the Square Enix online store, and they are set to ship this December. They are also taking pre-orders for the Nier Music Concert and Talk Live, as well as the Nier Music Concert The Memories of Puppets Blu-rays. You can find more details on the blog. In other Nier Automata news, Square Enix is reportedly hiring for a Nier-related project. However, it's uncertain whether it's a new piece of DLC, a sequel, or perhaps even a remaster or remake of its predecessor, Nier Gestalt and Replicant. And finally, at the 35th Golden Joystick Awards, Nier Automata was nominated for three out of the 21 possible awards. Studio of the Year, PlayStation Game of the Year, and Best Storytelling. It's a shame it isn't also being nominated for Best Audio as the game boasts one of the best original soundtracks of the year. Check out the blog to see what other titles have been nominated. Square Enix announced that they will continue to develop new content for their JRPG Final Fantasy XV all the way through 2018. The news was announced by director Hajime Tabata during an Active Time Report livestream at the 2017 Tokyo Game Show. Originally, the upcoming DLC Episode Ignis was planned to be the final piece of content for the game, concluding its story. However, that plan has been shuffled due to strong responses from fans wanting more of the game. The Final Fantasy XV team will continue developing new content and will expand upon the title's lore and story. The new goal of the development team is to patch plot-related holes in the story culminating in a proper conclusion, as well as fleshing out more characters in the game. You can read more of the details in the article on the blog. In other Final Fantasy XV news, the upcoming PlayStation VR title Monster of the Deep Final Fantasy XV has a new trailer showing off the good times you'll be having with your buddies Ignis, Promptu, Noctis, and Gladiolus. The game features fishing expeditions with Noctis and company across the various regions of Eos. It will also have an action-packed story mode, as well as a free fishing mode that lets you enjoy the scenery and fish at your own pace along with a variety of challenges. You can check out the quirky trailer for yourself on the blog. Persona Machine Atlas filed a DMCA takedown notice against the developers of RPCS3, a PS3 emulator on PC, 
for advertising their popular JRPG Persona 5 on their patron page. This notice threatened to terminate the entire development of the emulator application, but even then its team refused to give in to Atlas's demands. So, as advised from Patreon itself, all references of Persona 5 were to be removed on their crowdfunding page, which resolved the issue according to the emulator's team over on Reddit. In an announcement that soon followed, Atlas stated their reasons for issuing the DMCA, explaining that they wouldn't want the first experiences of new players to be riddled with instability, frame rate drops, and crashes that could potentially harm the user's machine, especially on a version they didn't oversee that would not meet the standard of their quality. Atlas goes on to acknowledge the passion of PC gamers clamoring for a Persona title on the platform. In response, they remark that they're paying attention to the matter, but without making any promises. In other words, we could soon be seeing Persona 5 on PC. The voice behind Geralt of Rivia from CD Projekt Red's Witcher franchise, Doug Cockle, has chimed in on the probability of a fourth Witcher game, as well as on the development of Cyberpunk 2077. During a panel at EGX 2017 in the UK, Cockle mentions that he is unaware of any project pertaining to a new Witcher installment, at least to his knowledge. The voice actor goes on to affirm what we already know so far, that CG Project Red is mostly preoccupied with the development of Cyberpunk 2077. Cockle also shares his feelings about working with CD Projekt Red, as well as his thoughts on some of the more sensual challenges he faced there, which you can check out on the blog. It's time to return to Tyria and Arianet's second expansion to their MMORPG titled Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire, now live for everyone. In celebration of the release, the developer has shared a substantial infographic full of large numbers, which highlights Guild Wars 2 notable milestones since its launch over five years ago, and you can check it out in the article on our blog. It's seriously long. Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire will take veterans and newcomers alike to the vast crystal desert littered with ruins, beautiful oases, and ancient temples. One of the new features introduced with the expansion are the four new mount types players can unlock and train using the max level mastery character progression system including the Raptor, the Skimmer, the Springer, aka Bunnies, and the Jackal. If you've been patient, Bethesda has finally released the full package of their post-apocalyptic RPG dubbed Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition, which you can purchase now. This re-release of 2015's Fallout 4 is available in both digital and physical formats, and contains all six of the previously released DLCs. To celebrate the release of the Game of the Year Edition, Bethesda is also selling a Fallout Game of the Year Edition Pip-Boy Collector's Edition, which are only available in extremely limited quantities. You can check out the article on the blog for images and links if you wish to place an order. Immediately after the last update, Slowclap released the patch 1.07 for their online action role-playing game Absolver that quickly addressed some of the feedback from the community's experience with the previous update, 1.06. This near-immediate action aimed to revert some of the changes made in the prior patch, as they were unfortunately causing issues for some players. You can check out what other changes were made over on the blog. Independent game publisher vs. Evil of the Banner Saga has announced their partnership with developer of City and Entertainment and publishing Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, the full-blown sequel to the critically acclaimed Pillars of Eternity. The first Pillars of Eternity was such a massive Kickstarter success that publisher Paradox Interactive, well known for City Skylines and Stellaris, jumped on board and helped produce the first game. It's an unusual move for Obsidian, to say the least, to go with a different publisher, especially considering the success of the original's crowdfunding campaign as well as the reception from players and critics alike. It leaves one to wonder just what happened with Paradox. You can read the full press statements from both companies on the blog. That's a wrap for the Week in Wikis. We're looking forward to another great week of gaming fun. Don't forget to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits, and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks for a great week, and as always, keep checking in with us for news reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest. The more followers we get, the larger the army of the Fexus grows.